Dear friends, in today's session we are going to see what is meant by two-dimensional random variable. In unit 1 we have learned what is meant by one-dimensional random variable. Here we are going to take a sample space S and it is going to associate with two different random variables X and Y. For example, you take your classroom and I am going to measure the weight of the student as well as height of the students. In two-dimensional random variable, as usual, we are going to split into a discrete random variable and then continuous random variable. We are going to, yeah, this is the formal definition you can see. For a discrete random variable x comma y, we are going to have joint probability mass function which satisfy all the probability with ij should be greater than or equal to 0 and we have to do double summation since it is a random variable varying over i and j that is going to be always 1 because the total probability is 1. Similarly, when we go for a continuous random variable, the joint probability density function. So simply we say fxy, in some books they will have the notation fx. Why? As visual, since it is a two-dimensional random variable, every value should be greater than or equal to 0 and here we will have double integration between minus infinity to infinity f of xy dy dx or dx dy both are same it is going to be always 1 this all the basic ideas now it is very essential to find the marginal pmf about the x and about the y for the case of discrete, it is easy, uh, from the table we can easily sort out it, so I will tell in the problems. For the case of continuous, we should be very careful. So if I can simply say f of x or fx of x, it is going to be minus infinity to infinity. Since I am founding the marginal function on x, I have to integrate with respect to y, then only all the y variables will go. Finally, I will be getting x variable alone. Similarly, marginal PDF for y is going to be simply here. We are going to integrate with respect to x minus infinity to infinity f of x comma y. Now you have easily guessed what is the formula. Here it is going to be f y of y. The second one is obvious, so I am not explaining you. You can see from the form. Keep on these ideas in our mind. We will directly go into the problem. The next one is conditional probability functions. You can see all the properties given here. I can explain you in a easier way. So, we remember probability of A bar B is probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Since we have a two dimensional random variable, we will say x equal to xi given y equal to yj okay or sometimes we will write like this so here always we remember i we use for x and j we use for y it is going to be probability of x equal to xi comma y equal to yj divided by probability of y equal to yj okay since it is a two dimensional random variable we will have joint probability mass function or density function so it is very easy to remember this formula similarly this is x given y similarly you can go for what y given x the next concept is we consider two random variable x, y, then when probability of x equal to x, i comma y equal to y, j is equal to simply probability of x equal to x, i into probability of y equal to y, j, then we say the two random variables x and y are independent. We have to check for each and every value of the table. If everything is satisfied, then we say the random variables are independent. 
Okay, keeping all these formulas in our mind, let us go into the problem solving for, let us consider the problem. Join probability mass function. So it is going to be discrete random variable and the function is given as p of x comma y is k times 2x plus 3y. x values are 0, 1, 2 and y values 1, 2, 3. So now first of all we have to form the table. So whenever you form table, this is the clue, you will see. You can take either x values as rows or y values as columns. When you make the table, my choice is always keep y on the top and x on the bottom. When you keep y on the top, that means all the y values will reflect here like the columns. When you keep x here, I will keep all the x values as the rows. 0, 1, 2. Now see my function probability of x comma y is k into 2x plus 3y. So now substitute all the values of x and y correspondingly then we can form the table. So in this first row x is 0 so we will be getting y value is 1 so 3k then 6k then 9k. Similarly, we can write 7k, 24k, 33k. And it is very important whenever you go for a discrete random variable, you have to make one extra column and extra row to check the total. Since I said x is here, I will say this as px of x and this as py of y. So you have to now add every column and every row. 18k, 24k, 30k. Similarly when you come here 15k, 24k, 33k and the grand total always either you total by column or you total by row, the grand total should be equal. It is going to be 72k. Hope you understand. Now let us solve the problem one by one. So we know the property, all the probability values should be greater than or equal to 0 and total probability double summation ij pij is going to be 1. So you Using this concepts, let us find the value of k. This is my grand total. So, 72k is equal to 1 since total probability is 1. So, k is equal to 1 by 72 days. Done. But never substitute this value in the table. Whatever we want to find, let us keep it as k. At the end of the problem, let us substitute the k values. Now, the first question asked to us is, what is the marginal distribution of x? So it is going to be very simple marginal distribution for x. So 0, 1, 2. These are all my x values. Now go to the corresponding total here. 18k first row, 24k second row, 30k. This is my marginal distribution function. So 18 by 72, 24 by 72, 30 by 72. At any cost, don't simplify it. Let us keep. Similarly now, I have to find the marginal distribution for y. So my y values are 1, 2, 3 and the corresponding probability is the total. What is it? 15k, 24k, 33k. Make a neat table, write all the formula in a proper way to get the full score. Okay. So now the first part of the question is over. We found the marginal distribution for x as well as the marginal distribution for y. The next question is you have to find the conditional distribution x on y. You see here, here we have lot of combinations. I am just going to give 
one or two examples then you understand how to solve it now find the probability of x equal to 0 given y equal to 1 immediately we use conditional probability so the formula is y equal to 1 probability of x equal to 0 comma y equal to 1 now go to the table x 0 and y is 1 this is 3k ok so my numerator is 3k I have to go for my denominator denominator p y equal to 1 means it comes under the marginal distribution of y if it is x it comes under the marginal distribution of x now marginal distribution of y equal to 1 it's going to be 15k so it is 15k I think now I gave the clear idea how to find the conditional distribution for a given values now similarly what we have to do we have to find all the 9 values when x equal to 0 y 1 2 3 when x equal to 1 y 1 2 3 when x equal to 2 y 1 2 3 this will complete the conditional distribution of x on y similarly you can do y on x I just did a particular example ok even suppose I will give one more example also what is the probability of y equal to 2 provided x equal to 1 then x equal to 1 y equal to 2 whole divided by probability of x equal to 1 now we have to go to the table x is 1 y is 2 when x is 1 y is 2 it is going to be 8k so 8k then now we have to go for the marginal function of x now this is my marginal distribution of x where they are asking x equal to 1 it is going to be 24k so my answer is 24k kk will get cancelled and you can simplify it now I give a clear idea how to find the marginal distribution function and conditional distribution the next part of the problem they are asking to find what is the probability distribution of x plus y the next part of the question is we have to find probability of x plus y so now we have the x values 0 1 2 and y values 1 2 3 so whenever we add what would be the minimum value 1 1 when it will come when x is 0 y is 1 whenever I want 2 I have two different options 1 1 or 0 2 similarly if I need 3 I have the options 0 3 1 2 also 2 1 for 4 I have only two options that is 2 comma 2 is one option and then 1 comma 3 is the other option it is an ordered pair okay this represents x value and this represents the y values now for 5 finally I have only one chance when x is 2 and y is 3 I will be getting 5 no other chances I have now let us go to the table and we are going to find the data when you go to the table we found x0 y1 it is 3 k similarly when you go for here 0 2 is 6 k and then 1 1 is 5 k so 6 k plus 5 k so now hope you got how we get this so 2 1 2 1 is going to be 7k 0 3 is going to be 9k and finally 1 2 is going to be 8k ok I think you got the point guys now similarly for 1 1 I can write 10k 11k and here we have only one chance 13k this is the probability of x plus y now the final question asked here is the final question asked here is what is the probability of x plus y greater than 3 
to find probability of x plus y greater than 3 it is simple we have two options that is 4 and 5 x plus y equal to 4 x plus y equal to 5 so just add this 10k plus 11k plus 13k when you add this we will be getting 34k and final answer always substitute the k value 34 by 72 if you can able to simplify you can simplify